Writing Ionic Formula by Valencing Charges. In this video, we're going to do exactly what the title says. We're going to use balancing charges to write ionic formulas. In previous videos or discussions, we've talked about how to get the charges for the ions. In some of these cases, we explained it with the electron configurations. And then in a couple of other ones, uh, mainly kind of your transition metals and things like that, we basically asked you to trust us and to just believe that that's in fact what the ions are. And as you learn more about electronic structure, you're going to be able to explain more of these as well. Here's a summary table of the charges that you'll likely encounter in general chemistry. Now, in this video, I want to extend that concept and talk about how you're going to put these together in order to form ionic compounds. So here we have three general principles for combining ions to make ionic compounds. First, ionic compounds are made from a combination of positive and negative ions. And this is required because an ionic compound needs to have its charges add to be zero. And so you'll use subscripts to achieve the balanced charges. So let's do an example. Here we have sodium chloride. We want to write out the ions of each species first. So this would give us sodium 1 plus and chlorine 1 minus. Now these need to balance to zero in order to make an ionic formula. In this case, the sodium is plus 1 and the chlorine is minus 1. And so if we just put one of those of each of those together, we automatically get a balanced charge. And so we're all done with just sodium chloride, one sodium, one chloride. We don't write a subscript of one. So when you only have one species, you just, the one is assumed, no subscript. Let's do a harder example. Let's do magnesium chloride. See if you can do this one on your own. Pause the video and see if you can write this out and come back when you're ready. Now, when we look at this one, magnesium has a plus two charge and chlorine has a minus one charge. If we simply combined one of each of these, then our charges wouldn't be balanced. Let's look at what happens if we do. We would have a plus two and a minus one. And that would add to be plus one, not a zero. So that's not gonna work. Instead, we actually need to have two chlorides to balance the charges. This would give us MgCl2. The two goes as a subscript on the chlorine to tell us that for every magnesium, there must be two chlorines to balance it. This gives us one plus two charge and then two negative one charges for a total of zero. So it's MgCl2. Let's do another example. Sodium oxide. So we'll see if you can do this one. Come back when you're ready. So for this one, we need to balance the charges and make them equal to zero, just like we did for our other ones. So to do this, we're going to need to have two of the plus one charges to balance out the negative two. So two plus ones plus a negative two. Or in other words, one sodium or two sodiums to every one oxygen. There is a shortcut to doing these problems. That is a handy trick for completing them very quickly. Let's redo each of the problems that we did before using what I'll call the crisscross shortcut. We're going to add one more to the list as well to show you an example of where you would need to be very, very careful using this trick. So the charge from each ion is going to go down as a subscript to the other ion. So here, so here would come down to this, and this would come down here, giving us one and one, so we would have sodium chloride, just one and one. Now let's look at the magnesium chloride. The two would come down to the chlorine, the one, would come down to the magnesium, and we would get magnesium chloride, Mg1Cl2. And as always, we don't put the one down. Now for sodium oxide, the plus one would come down here, the minus two would come down here, and we would get Na2O. Now, let's do the one that we would need to be really careful of. 
When we are doing ionic compounds, it is always the lowest whole number ratio. So what happens for MgO if we bring this down here and this down here? Well, it would give us Mg2O2, and that is not the lowest ratio, right? We can reduce that down. So if you use the crisscross trick, make sure that at the end you always check, is this the lowest ratio? And then divide by whatever number you need to to get it down to the lowest ratio. In this case, it's just one of each because the Mg, Mg has a plus two, the O has a minus two. And so they balance out if you just have one of each one. The crisscross shortcut is really handy, um, but you really have to watch out for that issue. Now, I discuss the polyatomic ions a little more inclusively in the naming ionic compounds video. But briefly, polyatomic ions are ions which are made up of two or more atoms. So here we have some examples, sulfate, phosphate, ammonium, there's a lot more. In these, the charge belongs to the entire ion, and we need to designate that when we're writing formulas involving these species. Let's do two examples. I'll leave our examples of ionic compounds up in order to help us with these next two problems. So first off, we have sodium sulfate. So we know that our sodium ion is an Na plus one, and we know that our sulfate ion is a SO4 two minus. We can do our crisscross trick, which would leave us with one sodium or two sodiums and one sulfate. Not so bad. Now let's do magnesium phosphate, which is a little trickier. Our magnesium is a plus two charge and our phosphate is a minus three charge. So when we do our crisscross, our phosphate is going to need to have a subscript of two. But that phosphate needs to, the entire thing needs to, there needs to be two of them. And so the way that we write that is with a parenthesis. So we put parentheses around the polyatomic ion and then the subscript on the outside of that, which says that there are two phosphate groups. And this is done in order to really draw attention to the fact that it is a phosphate group. It wouldn't really quite be the same if you put P2O8. You don't want to distribute it in. Um, but you also wouldn't want to just try to like put it on the, the oxygen because you would have like a subscript four, subscript two, and that's hard to see. And so the parentheses sets it aside and says, but there's two of these. So let's summarize what we learned today. When making ionic compounds, their charges need to add to be zero. You do this by using subscripts to make the pluses and the minus charges equal to each other. One trick for doing that quickly and easily is the crisscross rule, but you're going to need to be really careful with it to always reduce to the lowest possible ratio. When doing this with a polyatomic ion, you use parentheses around the polyatomic ion if a subscript is needed. If its subscript isn't needed, then you don't need to put parentheses around it. 